A long time ago, I made a video comparing Executioner and Titan's Bane. This has been over a year now, and it's time to look at that again. Because since then, we've seen quite a bit of an ironic journey for Titan's Bane especially, and that's what we're gonna talk about today. Let's begin with the changes we've seen Executioner go through. In 2015, or before that, Executioner was probably arguably in its best state ever. The price was 2250 gold, 30 physical power, 20% attack speed, but the important part here is that at the time it had a mix of percentage reduction and flat reduction. So you would get up to 24% protection reduction combined with up to 18 flat reduction after 3 hits. That was very very strong if you know how strong flat penetration or especially reduction is and then combining that with attack speed and power and percentage reduction in one item for a relatively low price was just a little bit too much. So Executioner got changed and originally it got nerfed pretty hard. The next iteration in February 2016 had 30 physical power, 25% attack speed and a percentage reduction of 8% with 4 maximum stacks for 2250 gold. This was significantly weaker than before, up to 32 percentage reduction isn't all that crazy, especially not if you don't have flat reduction along with it and it takes you 4 hits to stack it. The only upside of this version was that it had 5% extra attack speed, so 25%. So the item was changed again. The next version of it had 12% reduction for 3 seconds with maximum of 3 stacks. This was in June 2016 and it's somewhat closer to what we see today. The item still had 30 physical power and 25% attack speed. The total cost was 2250 gold. After that, in August 2017, we saw an increase in power to 35 physical power. The item was now loaded with stats, as if power and attack speed in combination with penetration on one item wasn't good enough beforehand, it now had even more of that, making it one of the better early to mid game pickups, especially with Echival being nerfed at the same time and Devaros Gauntlet coming back into the meta. Everything was favoring Executioner here, especially on Hunters. So after being significantly strong seasons ago, the item got buffed more and more and more after its initial nerfs and it didn't really need those buffs towards the end anymore, it was just kinda controversial at that point and kinda questionable. Originally it felt like yeah this item needs some more buffs, the 4 stacks were maybe a little bit too much, but down the road it just got strange. Executioner was picked up quite frequently, Titan's Bane was its competitor obviously, but towards the end less and less so. So obviously when you have two items that are supposed to compete in the same slot, you will nerf the one that's performing better, right? Well, let's just say Executioner got a price increase by 100 gold, to 2350 gold. That's it. And now, let's look at the other side of the story, and that's Titan's Bane. Titan's Bane was actually surprisingly untouched through most of its time in Smite. For the first seasons, it pretty much always had the same stats. Total cost, 2050 gold, 30 physical power, and all your physical attacks gain 33% physical penetration. Literally the only thing that changed over time is how some of the description was written. That was until we saw the first change to it in February 2017. And that was quite a significant one when we look at the price tag here. The price went up from 2050 gold to 2300 gold, so a solid 250 gold price increase. And I can tell you this much, that change wasn't down to assassins or warriors picking it up, it was mostly due to hunters. But that was eventually partially reverted. In August, the price was decreased again, not to its original price, but to 2150 gold. So only a 100 gold price difference to the original. Titan's Bane was picked up as a secondary penetration item by hunters at this point, sometimes, not always. It was picked up by assassins that utilize abilities more, and it was picked up by warriors in rare circumstances who would use it as their penetration item. This was not a very frequent occurrence though. Still, due to the tank meta, Hyrus made the decision to nerf Titan's Bane once again in the last patch, as they thought that warriors can utilize it too well and can do too much damage through it while building tanky. So what happened again? Titan's Bane's price got increased to 2300 gold. Sounds familiar? That's because it is. It happened before. And on top of that, Titan's Bane got another nerf though. And this nerf was reducing the percentage penetration of the item from 33 to 30. Not a massive nerf as such, it's just 3%. It is 3% after all, but it's not crazy. But it came with the various other changes 
namely to the tier 2 item here, which is Warrior's Bane. Warrior's Bane would now have 15% penetration instead of its previous 22% while still having the same price, meaning you would be stuck on 15% penetration for 800 gold as the price of Titan's Bane was increased. And even after that, the benefit would be slightly smaller. Now that makes you wonder, right? Executioner and Titan's Bane are somewhat in direct competition. They both have a one perk each that the other one doesn't have. For Executioner, that is dealing damage to a target that your ally has dealt damage to. So if you have protection reduction on a target, you will get increased damage even if you're not the one who applied the protection reduction. Meaning, if a hunter shoots a target, warriors will deal increased damage as well. If a hunter shoots a target, assassins will deal increased damage as well. Or a secondary hunter will deal increased damage as well. That's actually already ironic when you consider that Titan's Bane was nerfed. Because Titan's Bane, as opposed to Executioner, only works for the user himself. As such, obviously, if a warrior builds it, only the warrior gets the benefit. And likewise, a hunter couldn't stack this for his whole team. So now, a hunter building Executioner can still give warriors the same benefit in regards to base damage, as it will still shred protections for them, meaning they will still deal more damage. Pretty much equal to what Titan's Bane was if all three stacks are up. Or even more. The benefit of Titan's Bane? Extra structure push. Good stat to have, especially with the towers being more tanky, but it's only so long that it's worth it. And this is something we see in Duel at the moment. Duel used to be a mode completely dominated by Titan's Bane, especially on Hunters as well. It would give them the power to quickly push down the structures, the tower, the phoenix or even the bull demon, and that was the meta for a very long time as it was just the most effective choice to get. Yet still, even in Duel, where you want to hit quick hits in a short time and you usually don't have extended trades, or when you do you run the risk of your enemy duking attacks very very well and not keeping the passive up, people will now prefer Executioner. Executioner is what's typically built on Hunters and Duel, as opposed to the typical Titan's Bane that we saw previously, even though stat-wise and function-wise Titan's Bane should do a lot more for you in Duel, where structures are your enemies and you don't have allies that deal damage with you, unless you're counting minions. And yes, I'm talking Grandmaster's level here. But let's not just base the stats of the items on that alone, let's look at the numbers a little bit. I made a comparison on the two items in my last video, and for the most part it still holds true. The penetration values on Executioner haven't actually changed, and the penetration values on Titan's Bane are still the same as well. If you use Executioner, you basically have a penetration deficit over Titan's Bane that you have to make up for, because your first hits will deal less damage. For a character that starts with an 0.5 attack on his attack chain, that is no issue at all. For those who start with a 1.0 chain, that's a bit different. But you're gonna lose some damage in the beginning, and if you use your bursty abilities in the beginning, then Titan's Bane is definitely the better option for you. The total number to lose this pen deficit for Executioner originally was 24 hits. So you will literally have to hit 24 basic attacks on a target to be even in penetration with Titan's Bane and afterwards you would get an advantage out of hitting with Executioner. But again, this only counts if you only factor in basic attacks. Every ability after the third hit would already deal more damage with Executioner as you would have more penetration. And this gap is now even bigger. It used to be 3%, 33 to 36. Now it is 6% of a gap. What does that mean for the numbers? Well, it's a lot easier for Executioner to go even with Titan's Bane and get rid of that pen deficit now. It takes 12 basic attacks instead. That means after the 12th basic attack, everything will deal more damage with Executioner and it only takes 4 basic attacks to have the extra 6% penetration against a target with all your abilities as well. This is very reasonable, you can definitely hit 4 shots on a target, and every ability after that deals more damage, quite a fair bit more, especially against tanks as well. But that's not even all, we're only talking about the penetration here. You also have 5 extra power on Executioner, meaning that all your abilities and basic attacks will deal more damage by default, especially against squishies where those base damage values are more relevant. And that is still not all. On top of that, you also still have 25% attack speed that Titan's Bane does not have at all. 25% attack speed is huge, so huge that many characters can benefit from it even as a single attack speed item in their build, just to enhance the damage through the power that they built early in their build. And that all costs you 50 gold more. 
That is the literal difference between these items. And I would like to emphasize again, Executioner is 50 gold more. After 4 shots, you deal more ability damage. It takes 12 shots to go even with Titan's Bane, against a tank especially, which is possible. You will also have more power, more attack speed, and you will allow your teammates to deal more damage in a teamfight. The only thing you lose is Structure Push, but then again you get more attack speed for Structure Push, so even that should actually completely even out. There's no reason for anyone who's not ability-based to build Titan's Bane. If you're playing a hybrid character, you wanna have Executioner. And Titan's Bane is just objectively, stat-wise, the way inferior item of the two right now. By a very, very large stretch. So large, in fact, that if you have sufficient flat penetration and you're just looking to target out tanks with your basics, you can consider going Executioner on otherwise very ability-focused characters. And that is the joke of what Titan's Bane, an item that was not overperforming, has become in relation to its direct competitor, the Executioner. With that, thank you guys for watching. I hope you enjoyed this and it was a little bit informative. If you're new to the channel, feel free to leave a sub and maybe click the bell as well. It will alert you of my new videos and it will give you the chance to win some codes in the description down below. I will be streaming on Hyrus TV tomorrow at 7am Atlanta time. Feel free to stop by there and say hi. Other than that, see you for the next one tomorrow. Dirk Sloth, out.